I'm going to go over the operation of the freeze dryer that we have in the lab. Um, the, on the front of the unit there's a uh, vacuum indicator uh, as well as the cooling coils. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead on and uh, one aspect is, is you really shouldn't turn the freeze dryer on until the coils are actually cold. Uh, we just had it on previously so that's just the compressor that will um, run uh, and it's going to do is it's going to actually freeze this actually down to minus 70 uh, degrees inside here. Uh, before we actually turn things on then while it's cooling down I'm going to explain how the uh, thing actually operates. Uh, inside here there's actually a, uh, an Edwards pump and that pump is what's responsible for pulling the vacuum in the back um, and that's pulling a vacuum into this chamber here where the, the freezing coil is um, and the samples are actually placed um, in either inside the, uh, the top chamber here uh, or they can hang as bottles from the, the side of this. At the moment I'm just going to show the, uh, the, the basic operation. You can see the ice now uh, forming on the, the coils that are bound behind here. Uh, but really before you, you do turn on the uh, compressor, or I'm sorry, the vacuum pump, uh, it actually, you need, it should check the, uh, the vacuum pump oil. It's on wheels so it'll actually uh, come out here for you. Uh, it's a little hard to see it, uh, certainly, but uh, if you actually take this and you tip it a little bit, you can see the, the pump oil uh, between this is the maximum, this is the minimum value uh, here in the back of the unit. So, uh, now, the, the operational uh, principle of this is is basically uh, a vacuum is pulled in this chamber and you have a cold here the samples are in here or are, are hung from from the sides here um, and that in order for the heat to transfer to the coil uh, in a vacuum it needs to have molecules to carry that so a freeze dryer what it functionally does is it actually pulls the water from the the sample that's in attached and then uh, when the, the heat is then moving towards this coil, it draws the water with it. So that's the principle behind uh, the actual uh, vacuum itself. Uh, we're still waiting for it to come down to, you can see the, te uh, the, the, the temperature is now about minus uh, 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, once we get to that, uh, and we, we can turn on then the, uh, the actual vacuum. And the vacuum gauge itself here, um, it see it actually sits normally a little bit off there, so that shouldn't be misrepresented uh, as, as as being under a vacuum. Uh, you need to make sure that all of these uh, valves are go go to uh, say vent on them. Um, it's a little misleading, but that that's venting of the the sample container that's attached. Um, these should also be seated, uh, the top and the bottom. Uh, the uh, unit itself is, has quite a bit of vacuum grease on it. And, and so the key aspect of this is that the vacuum grease should be roughly in contact in, in that groove that you see on the top here. Uh, placing that on top. And you should be able to feel around there. Uh, we just greased up all the fittings and so forth so that it's uh, pretty free moving at the moment. Um, and at that point in time, um, you can go ahead and do the test, uh, turning on the coil. Now you'll notice that the valve initially, it actually bounced this direction. But as the pump operates here, it should uh, begin to pull the, uh, the vacuum down uh, below zero. Now at the moment it's actually it's not doing that uh, which may mean that there's a leak in the system and this is actually pretty common. 
so in trying to search out where the leaks might be, this needs to be seated. Uh, this here needs to be seated as well. And uh, like I said, all of these fittings and so forth also should be seated. Uh, keeping in mind that the pump that's operating in this is actually a very, it's a high vacuum pump, but it means that it actually uh, moves a, a rel relatively low volume of gas. And so as a result of that, um, it doesn't necessarily seal down. Now, uh, you can still see that it is not managing to pull pressure there. And so what that invariably means is that it is not uh, adequately seated on top. So I'm going to actually go onto this unit and, and push down uh, pretty uh, substantially. In fact, uh, actually going to get a, ch a chair here. And in the process of initiating then this, it may be necessary to get up and place substantial weight actually on the uh, center of this down and sometimes you can hear the pump start to engage. And the process of doing that looking to see if all of these are in fact engaged. Wondering if one of them has been to vent and we are not still not having any success in getting this down um, actually right now it's starting to function correctly you can see that it was uh, um, the the needle is, is is still in the red range the uh, it's in mil microns of mercury here um, once it starts to pull a vacuum, you're usually in pretty good shape. Uh, the reason is, is of course, the vacuum tends to pull itself tighter. And in the process of doing that, uh, that will continue to, to pull, pull down. So I'm going to go ahead at this point, freezers are on. I'm going to put it back in position. And probably by the time I do that, it will have uh, pushed, pulled quite a bit of uh, a vacuum. Now, uh, just so you're aware, you can see it's already pulled down to 5,000 uh, uh, down here. And uh, just so that you're aware of how the other th uh, glassware works, um, the, the glassware is actually very expensive. It looks a little like a beaker, um, but it certainly uh, is not just a simple beaker. Uh, it's made out of um, glass that's actually uh, quite resistant to any aspect of breaking. And samples can be placed inside that. In fact, if you think about how the heat transfer works, there's a thing called a shell freezer, where it's best that this would actually be frozen uh, in a shell around that. And uh, these can be then placed uh, on the unit itself and uh, this is then attached to the freeze dryer uh, and then it's turned and, and it'll actually pull a vacuum inside of this unit in order to then pull the water out. Uh, we also tend to put samples inside the unit itself, very small ones like an epitube rex. Uh, and in doing that, uh, we've concocted several different things, including a, uh, a rig like this, so that you can set a epi tube rack uh, in on top of, of the unit. You can see that right now we've already pulled down into the uh, the yellow region, um, and in a sense, this is something I would normally do even before I add my samples, just to verify 
that the whole system is in fact uh, is it working. In principle then to be extremely dry with a big sample this would pull down into the, uh, uh, the green region. Um, that's at least the basics on the operation uh, and then there's uh, additional uh, guidelines that we have in the documents. Uh, we also log the, uh, the hours and operational time here so we have some idea of how often to uh, change the oil.